Welcome back to the channel, all you champions, all you legends out there, my YouTube family. This article, oh, we have so many good articles today. <laughs> Make sure you use those chapters. It's a good day. This article is from Coindesk.com. It is titled, SEC case had almost no impact on Ripple's talks with central banks, says executive. So it's reputable. What? are the implications so they've been talking to central banks this entire time not like we didn't know we've been following what they were doing with the imf although uh they've been trying to keep recent activity very quiet if you pay attention we saw a couple of slides a long time ago about about, about a year and a half two years ago we saw the slideshow that they did we know that they're on the imf's advisory board we know that you know we know they they have a good relationship with the bank of uh, international uh, uh settlements we know they've been working with the Bank of England, but, you know, Bank of Japan, we know Bank of Japan is, is super bullish on uh, XRP, at least SBI, one of the heads of the Bank of Japan. They believe all of Japan is going to run on XRP that we know. But Central Bank, let, let's let's get into this article, OK? Hope you all doing fantastic out there. It says here, James Wallace, the esteemed James Wallace, big money, James Wallace, who whenever you see James Wallace making an appearance, you know it, he's there to bring in the big money. Let's keep going. James Wallace also said the decision that Ripple's sale of XRP did not constitute investment contracts was a major victory, not just for Ripple, but also for the industry. Ripple's long legal saga, well, they go into the SEC stuff a little bit. Let's skip that. It says here, quote, we've had no countries, none. Say, we don't want to talk to you because of it. So one implication is they've made more progress than maybe we're able to acknowledge because they have to keep certain things under wraps. They have memorandums of understanding. And of course, that also comes Look, memorandum of understanding is typically going to come with a non-disclosure agreement. They kind of go hand in hand until you get everything, uh, you know, uh, uh, completed. They're at the stage where they want to launch. Right. So that's typical. So I, I think we're almost underestimating. We probably should be overestimating how much has been done. And there could be very specific reasons why everything hasn't been deployed just yet. I think there's a little bit more work. I th I'm going to go out on a limb and say that there is a, a good amount of commercial banks in the United States that they're trying to bring in before they flip the switch. Could they flip the switch now? Yes, they can. They could. I believe that. Just my humble opinion. But. If you remember, here's why I say that. For those of you who've been day ones on this channel, you remember we covered a lot of articles about a year, year and a half ago, where the small banks were very arrogant. They were a, a lot of them were against the new financial system. You remember that? OK, so they were lagging behind. But now they've been put in a position where they're weakened, greatly eroded bonds, you know, so they have a lot of unrealized losses. You know that commercial real estate. I mean, it just goes on and on. Massive, massive deposit flight, lack of trust in the banks. So now they're in a position where at the right time where Ripple, well, XRP has clarity. Now Ripple can go in and say, hey, we see you're hurting. We can help you. So I think they want to bring in as many banks as possible. And I'm all for that, by the way. I'm all for that. I think they, they're trying to bring as many banks as possible before they launch everything. Flip the switch, right? Now, another thing that indicates that, remember, I can't remember who it was. There was an individual who was talking about a $35 XRP price. Put all the pieces of the puzzle together, right? Because they're not going to shoot it straight to us. We have to put these things together for ourselves. But that individual was talking about if a $35 price were to be hit for XRP, it would negate any fine that the SEC would lay upon Ripple, which means that uh, uh, it will be almost like they lost nothing, which gives a lot of incentive. I said this before in another video where I covered this. It would give a lot of incentive to Ripple to, 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 to deploy infrastructures that require massive amounts of XRP. So that price could be raised to $35. I mean, not unless they just want to take that loss. They could. They definitely could. But why would you not negate it? So I'm just keeping that possibility in the back of my mind also as to why they may be taking their time to flip the switch. Because they're trying to scoop, scoop up all of those banks. And this is the prime time to do it. Right? And, and, and before they collapse. Before. So, once again, I reiterate. This is what it says. Quote, we had no countries. None. 
say we don't want to talk to you because of it. Let's move on. We have so many articles today. This might be a little bit of a longer video, but it's going to be much more of a potent video. All right. So now we have this article here from CoinGape.com and it's titled Ripple Partner Launches Internal Invoicing Solution. Can XRP reach one dollar? Now, the one dollar is not important to me. I know it's my humble opinion. It's not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. I, but I know we're going to smash through one dollar. I'm not even concerned with that. Not even a little bit. We're going way past the moon, baby. That's how I feel. From the research, the research, all the research indicates it. They're, they're even talking about the trillions. By the way, shout out to the members only section. They're the reason I can do these longer videos. Ripple Partner launches internal invoicing solutions says the netting manager developed by CorePay, a partner of Ripple, aims to automate and streamline the settlement of internal invoices. It says Ripple's partner firm CorePay, a leading cross-border business, has unveiled its latest financial tool, the netting manager, aimed at automating and streamlining the settlement of internal invoices for multinational corporations with global subsidiaries. About it, maybe, I say about half a year ago. Remember we covered all of those subsidiaries of banks? Do you remember that? Atajari Wafa, Europe, Atajari Wafa, Main Hub. Remember, we were, we were talking about all these different subsidiaries around the world of different banks that Ripple has association with. And I was saying that if the main hub, that's how I like to phrase it, deploys infrastructure from Ripple and they're benefiting from it. Why would those other banks that are subsidiaries or supervised entities, why would they not use it as well? It would be logical that they would, which means what? That if we know the main banks, for instance, you take like FIS, FIS is not with us. They're with H bar, even though I hold H bar as well. I hold ton of H, ton of H bar. <laughs> anyway, I'm deep in all the bank coins, but you already know that. But what I'm saying is they're not with Ripple. But FIS is a supervisory entity sitting over banks. You look at Quant, Quant as another example with SIA, and SIA is a supervisory entity that uh, connects a lot of different banks, right? Those banks are more uh, apt to utilize the same infrastructures. So you got to bring in those banks as a possibility that their capital can also flow through XRP or XRPL based systems, which then does what to that price is getting serious, people. Oh, yeah. It's getting very serious. <laughs> I'm liking I'm liking everything I'm seeing right now. Today was holy smokes. Is a lot of news today. So the, the netting manager aimed at automating and streamlining the settlement of internal invoices for multinational corporations with global subsidiaries. According to a press release, the cutting edge system makes use of intercompany netting, a commonly utilized financial technique among multinational firms. You're familiar with this, right? Multinational firms to combine transactions in different currencies, yielding considerable time and cost savings. But you know what else that yields? Consistency and flow. That means that capital is constantly flowing. There's constant processing processes being undergone, which does what to that price? Might raise. It might. Might. It might raise. Streamlined internal invoice settlement in the news release. Jim Kessler. Now we have a name. Vice President of Currency Risk Analytics at Corpay. We need to keep update on them. Underlined how simple it is to use the Netty Manager. That's another thing. They're all making everything simple. Algorand making it simple. Stellar's making everything simple. The more streamlined everything is, the more money we can take when the new financial system is ready to be deployed. And let me tell you something right now. It doesn't look like it's going to be long. I say a year or two. Year or two, maybe. Uh, and, and, and watch... Listen, I give you a couple of catalysts that I'm watching closely. BRICS Nation deployment of the common currency. I don't think they're going to do it soon. That's that's very, very. Um, it's going to take a lot of technical ability, a lot of strategy, a lot of negotiation on how they want to do that. If they back it with gold, gold's going to skyrocket. I'm watching that as well. I'm watching the buying up of gold again, a little bit of selling of the gold from the central banks. But they did a lot of buying. Also, you got to look at that balance. Right. Um, so anyway. That's one catalyst that I'm paying attention to. The fall of the banks globally, not just in the United States. They're all propped up, everyone. We have always known this. Remember, we covered the injection of capital 
in, the, in, in Japan at one time. This was a, a while ago. We covered that. Then we looked at the injection of capital in the uh, 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 United Kingdom. Then you have, of course, the uh, massive injections of capital from the United States. The Fed is still bailing banks out to this day. Right. So I'm looking at the fall. I'm keeping an eye on the fall of the banks. You saw what happened to PacWest, right? PacWest getting bought. So that was that's another bank failure, which was mind blowing that it really didn't get as much coverage as it should have. Then keep an eye on commercial real estate in the United States. Now, let's keep going. This is in contrast to conventional systems that can take months to adopt to the tool streamlined and user friendly design enables firms of all sizes to do so in a couple of days, which means anybody can use it. That's exactly what that means. They made it so easy. There's no reason for you not to use this system that saves and makes you capital and gives you powers that you never had before, like traceability. Right. So now let's move on to another article here. We're flowing today. I think we're doing a pretty good job. Pretty good job. You guys having a good day out there? All right. Keep your mind strong and uh, keep your body strong, eating healthy, drinking some water, things of that nature. Right. Take care of yourself. All right. Because that's what I like to hear. This is from you dot today. Oh, there's so much happening. I like it. Muy linda, mi gente. I like it's titled SBI. Yeah, every time I hear SBI, I get excited. SBI spotlights ripples XRP powered on demand liquidity solution. What just happened that makes this so significant? Did you see what was going on in Japan? Did you see how they adjusted everything in their monetary system? The, the yields and all of that good stuff. Do you see that? If not, look it up. <laughs> all right, look it up. SBI is very smart. Let's scroll down here. But this is strategic. They're letting everyone know in Japan. Like, hey, listen, everyone in the financial system, all you top people, we see the problems you're having. Don't forget XRP. Don't forget on-demand liquidity. Don't forget how the XRPL can save us money and help us to not only prop up, but to sustain and build our financial system into something that it has never been before all right let's scroll down here it's looking all good i'm feeling really really good so strengthening is a long-standing relationship with ripple sbi vc trades president tomahiko kondo has disclosed the company's enhanced strategy for ripple's on-demand liquidity service SBI, one of Ripple's oldest partners, aims to bolster also the partner that said Japan would run completely on XRP, but we already know that. I like to just put that out there. This is aims to bolster the real time transmission of XRP. <laughs> oh, I'm just, I'm just in my mind. I can see the price just going up, 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 up. This is me. I'm not asking you to feel the same. Ripple's native cryptocurrency. During a recent webinar, Kondo unveiled a slide. I would like to see. Did anybody have their hands on this presentation? Because I now I'm going to be searching. It says unveiled a slide indicating a considerable influx of transaction volume to XRP Ledger from Asia. If we can get our hands on that, I don't. It doesn't matter who it is. We have great researchers on this channel. I'm going to be searching as well. Aligning with Ripple's overarching goal of expediting cost effective international remittances let's go here blockchain analyst yasin mubarak commented that the slide quote indicates a huge amount of transaction volume will be coming to xrp ledger from asia i told you oh i told you they, they were they've been in deep with the monetary authority of singapore for a long time even before the new cbdc platform we've been covering the uh, um the Asia activity of Stellar and Ripple so long is mind blowing. But some people forgot SBI saying you shouldn't have. There's a huge amount of volume. How did they say this? They say it's coming. I'm going to give you the exact thing it says indicates a huge amount of transaction volume will be coming. Not might come. It may come. And we're not sure. They said will definitively, which does what to that price. That's just how I look at it. I'm here to get that bank money. And it looks like that bank money is coming. Let's keep going. Japan's crypto landscape. It says, in meantime, Ripple's Emi Yoshikawa spotlighted Japan's robust support for crypto. Underscored by prominent government officials keynotes. Oh, this is getting too good. At the recent Web3 conference. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. During the WebEx Asia conference, an influential event in the global crypto arena, Prime Minister Kishida expressed his government's heightened backing for Web3 technology. <laughs> How's it feel to win so much? <laughs> oh, man. Let's move on to another article here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So now, now we get to this article. It just keeps coming. I, I feel this is some of the best information I've gotten in a long time. Just doing a little bit of research. This is from the crypto and it's titled. This is a fun article. All right. It says, could XRP rally to $20,000? Pundit makes the case with interesting insights. Now, I'm just going to read the little piece. Little tidbit from the article. I'm not saying I agree with this. I'm not saying I'm against it. If it were to go that high, I take it. I take it. But this is this person's opinion. All right. It says here in the crypto scene were wild speculations. I like how they have to put that there to keep everybody happy who is against this uh, this price that they would consider to be outlandish. But you don't have to do that article, right? Or just let's just give it out, put it out there. Let the people make up their mind their own minds. This is often dominate discussions. Chad Steingraber. The creative director at Ghost Punch Games has presented an ambitious case for the possibility of XRP reaching an astounding $20,000 price point. While it is important to note that these are mere speculations and there is no guarantee that such events will occur, his insights offer intriguing food for thought. You don't say, because <laughs> I'm sure he has some kind of research backing this up. It says, here's the actual tweet. From Chad Steingraber it says, oh, this person's verified. It says, if you hadn't read my theory from the future, I think you should give it thought. And then it's, it's titled, quote, the Chad Steingraber theory, the road to a 20K XRP, a thread from the future. Let's see if they actually have it here because the tweet cuts off. It says, principles driving value. Steingraber starts by laying out three fundamental principles that determine the value of an asset. What I take from this is, that uh, maybe, and we're going to read these these things in a, in a moment, but maybe these things, even even if they don't take the price that high, that these are things that could lend to the price going to, to a, a higher place than where it is now. That's how I look at this. So first and foremost, the, there's the classic economic principle of supply and demand, which once again, I will say that there's not enough XRP to go around if big money starts buying it all. There's not. Which is why all, if just... Look at the circulating supplies of all the bank coins. They're literally made to uh, uh, fit together like pieces to a puzzle and play different parts in the new financial system. Together, they're, they're still not enough. I'm, I'm just putting it out there. That's personally how I feel. It says, in the case of XRP, with a limited supply of less than 100 billion coins, that sounds like a lot until you start thinking about the trillions that have to flow through them, through XRP and XRP being burned as well. But let's keep going. It says 100 billion coins scarcity could significantly drive up prices if the demand surges. Secondly, using a real estate analogy, he delves into, quote, market appreciation, un uh, unquote, concept. When assets appreciate in value over time, the overall market value increases, even if the actual money injection remains limited. Lastly, he calls attention to what, what we're looking at. I'm thinking about in terms of value, right? So some people will put their cash into a bank, send that transaction over to an exchange, buy some XRP. But then you also have some people who are going to, let's say, tokenize the, their, their house value, right? Some people will tokenize gold or other assets, paintings and things like that. So value outright, raw value. There's a whole lot of raw value that will be tokenized and flowing across the XRPL. So I look at it that way. And as more and more value just continues to be generated in the world, printed, created in the world, um, so too that there's not a limit on how much could be deployed on the XRPL, right? Not to say that there's going to be a max of everything on the XRPL. No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that sky's the limit. We'll see. So now let's continue on here. It says, when assets appreciate in value over time, the overall market value increases. Even if the actual money injection remains limited. Lastly, he calls attention to the notion of, quote, limited assets, unquote, highlighting the value attributed to assets, assets like the Mona Lisa. Good point. Due to their uniqueness and societal importance. XRP's unique properties. Transitioning to the specifics of XRP, Steingraber 
all uh, emphasizes is limited supply and the deflationary mechanism causing caused by burning small portions of XRP during ledger transactions. That's what I was saying before. He underscores the importance of the circulating supply, which heavily influences the assets price. At present, XRP's market cap is around $37.7 billion. This value has $18 billion, uh, was $18 billion at the time. However, the number doesn't represent the actual amount of money invested in XRP. However, it merely reflects the current value people are willing to pay. And it says here, well, I'm skipping a whole lot, but you can go to CryptoBasic.com if you want to read the rest, okay? It says, XRP, the road to $20,000. The creative director contends that banks require privacy for internal ledger transactions. And XRP was never intended for public retail trading. That's what I've been telling people all the time. This is what I was told when I first learned about XRP, which was the first cryptocurrency my brother ever told me about. He said, hey, these are not for retail, right? And I, I justify that by saying that retail was just a necessary uh, mechanism. You know why, right? So now, Let's continue on here. It says instead, he speculates that banks will create private XRP ledgers and issue their derivatives similar to how central banks hold gold as a backing asset. This is something I was talking about recently. It's also uh, 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 one of the reasons why they wouldn't care about XRP's price. They're buying gold uh, like it's no tomorrow at gold above $1,900. Which, by the way, if they come out with that BRICS currency, gold will shoot up past two thousand five hundred dollars. Just my humble opinion. It went to look at the look at where it went into all time high when both central banks were buying it back in uh, like before May, and then those banks went down. Look at where it went to then. So I think that yeah, it definitely could skyrocket past two thousand five hundred dollars. But hmm, we'll see. Silver will go up also. You saw silver just rise recently. What it was like twenty three, twenty four dollars. Then it went to twenty five after consolidating for a long time, right? So anyway. It says here, Steingraber theorizes that XRP could become a reserve currency asset. We'll see about that. I'll take it if it does. It says, with banks creating their derivatives on the XRP ledger. Okay, I see how he's phrasing that. I like that. I like that differentiation, but, but not saying that it's going to be the reserve currency of the United States. The same banks could use it as a, as a reserve currency. I could see that. Yeah, I could see that. It says, for instance, Bank of America could issue a BOA coin on the XRPL using XRP as a reserve asset to back it up. Yet yeah, liquidity, liquidity, liquidity. People forgetting about that liquidity. We can create the biggest liquidity pool mankind has ever seen. Why would you not tap into that? And look, saying that for XRP, same thing for Stellar. You could do that with Stellar. We'll get into a Stellar chapter later. It says internal transactions among banks and institutional great liquidity providers would rely on XRP to facilitate the exchanges between these private coins, which would be trillions, right? We're talking about interbank payments, big money, people, big money. According to him, this case of private mass adoption would catalyze the $20,000 gold. I mean, gold. <laughs> I got gold on my mind. Um, this person makes a very, very good, solid case. Now, once again, I'll say, I don't know if it'll go to $20,000. If it does, I'll take it. Uh, but once, once again, what this individual has laid out definitely builds the scenario for a much, much higher price. I think it's illogical to think anything else. I do. I just don't see how it, you would just, it would be dirt cheap in the future. It just can't be. Now, let's move on to another article here. More activity for XRP. It's going, the XRPL is going insane right now with good activity. <laughs> when I say insane insanity is a good thing, it means just a great deal. This article is also from the CryptoBasic.com. And it is titled, Uphold and Sologenic Partner to Introduce XRP Purchases Globally. All right. Keep doing good. Uphold. Sologenic collaborates with Uphold to enable seamless XRP and solo purchases globally by introducing, quote, Topper, an on-ramp solution boasting high approval rates and swift, is that pun intended, swift settlement speed, Dubai-based Sologenic. A prominent player in global tokenization solutions has announced collaborating with U.S.-based crypto exchange Uphold to launch a new application. According to a recent tweet from Sologenic, the strategic partner saw the introduction of a novel on-ramp solution 
designed exclusively for XRP Ledger, dubbed, quote, Topper. Sologenic's tweet about the alliance stated that Topper brings numerous advantages, including high approval rates, swift settlement speed, once again, I think there's pun intended, and worldwide, <laughs> worldwide accessibility to XRP and solo tokens. Notably, the features also extend to the United States. Meanwhile, the Uphold Exchange confirmed partnering with Sologenic's decentralized exchange platform to build the on-ramp solution. All right, we're going to stop there. I don't want to cover the entire thing, but great things are happening. Let's move to another article here. This one is from U.Today and it's titled XRP Ledger L2 Smart Contract. Hence, yeah, I did that randomly. Hence, <laughs> got to make it interesting. At timeline for critical milestone for launch. Okay, all right. I like this activity. Keep it up. Keep it up. XRP Ledger Layer 2 platform Evernode has shared an update as it advances its journey toward launch. Evernote brings, quote, Layer 2 smart contracts via hooks to the XRP Ledger ecosystem. In a Twitter update, Evernote stated that it has tentatively scheduled the audit of the hooks V3 testnet to commence in mid-August. So now we have another date to add to our calendars. It cites a reason for this. Like other XRPL grantees, it was still waiting on the paperwork and funds from Ripple to confirm. And another update, it shares details on the testing of the Nomad contract. While the development team is progressing in its testing, it says the Nomad contract is proving harder to wrangle than expected, as what it is on the nodes under its control is not persisting on the beatnet. It hopes to untangle this issue in the upcoming week. All right, moving on right, right along. Keeping everything flowing, which, by the way, I will do the uh, Spartan information and the Musashi chapters probably in the next video. I complete. I have so many articles up right now. I completely forgot uh, to add those in. All right. So my apologies for that. But we will do it in the next video. This article here is from CryptoNews.com. It is titled XRP price prediction as 12 billion trading volume comes. Are whales buying? I mean, I don't care about whales at all. Anyone who could possibly could be considered retail. I'm not concerned with that capital at all. I'm here for that bank money. I just I can't pretend to be concerned. I'm not. Don't don't get me wrong. When those numbers go green, it's exciting. It's fun. I use it for that positive energy. I'm here for the bank money. All right. So anyway, let's let's keep it going. Indeed, an analysis from Look On Chain found that most whales whales have still held on to their XRP even after the altcoins price surged in the wake of Ripple SEC ruling. Uh, and, and, you know, that doesn't surprise me because they know where XRP can go and they don't want to get, now I want to say, I won't say priced out. They don't want to have to buy in at a higher price because once it starts going a little bit higher, I don't, I don't think there's going to be a lot of coming down. There's going to be some volatility, but not at the ranges where we're seeing right now. No, not in the future. So they're going to hold on to a good bag. I'm sure they did some selling off beforehand, but they probably, look, I think a lot of individuals have, a piece that they'll sell off and they're trading actively and then they have a bag that they're going to hold, right? Not everybody's just a long-term investor and they're holding all of it. So now, let's continue on here. It says, as such, the market can expect XRP to return to growth sooner or later with the coin potentially set to return to 80 cents in the next few weeks. I can see that happening before reaching 90 cents or higher in the next couple of months. And in the longer term, Ripple's growth as a business could help push XRP even higher, potentially to two to three dollars by the first half of next year, which will be a beautiful thing. Could happen sooner, but I think it doesn't really make a difference at this point. It's coming, in my humble opinion, not financial advice. So now let's move on here. This article here is from CoinMarketCap.com. And it is titled XRP continues to attract high interest on major exchanges. All right. So it says here, the volume to open interest ratio is used to measure trade activities on major exchanges. 
When the interest metric is high, it means there is an increase in buyers and sellers willing to trade the token, signaling speculative interest. For bystanders, a decent volume to open interest ratio could be a good sign to trade in such a token. Similarly, data from CoinMarketCap shows that XRP is in the positive region, adding 2.23% to its token price. At the time of press, the token is exchanging hands at 71 cents. It says, this impressive performance adds to a run of sustained performance since the court decisions in the SEC Ripple lawsuit. All right. So now we're going to stop right there. Let's move on. I'm trying to get through all the artic articles today. We still have about maybe six or seven left, I think. Maybe a little bit more than that. So I'm trying to get through them here. Now, this article here is from U.Today and it's titled XRP Holders. I mean, XRP Holders Lawyer wants sec chair to stop ignoring the law all right let's see what's going on here because i haven't been concerned with gensler in a long time says so, <laughs> with current crypto regulation sentiment in the united states taking a different momentum xrp holders lawyer john deaton has once again called out gary gensler the chairman of the united states securities and exchange commission for what he perceives as obvious attempt to shy away from the law i think yeah i think we all can see that Dean referenced a recent video interview featuring Gensler talking about how securities laws apply to most of the tokens in the industry. What? The crypto lawyer categorically stated that the said securities laws do not apply to these tokens as determined by the Howey test and exemplify in the latest Ripple ruling. Dean said that in reality, securities laws may apply to the quote offer and sell of tokens, including hashtag Bitcoin. Which, by the way, is interesting activity with Bitcoin. I saw an article today where there's a big money person telling people to buy Bitcoin. But then I saw a, n a few articles where, uh, you know, those services that collect data were showing that big money is putting Bitcoin on exchanges in mass, which means there's a possible sell off coming. You see how that works? They tell you to buy. Meanwhile, they're loading it up on exchanges to, to try to sell on everybody, take their money. Anyway, let's continue. I just thought that was interesting. It was on my mind. So Dean said that in reality, securities okay. So to buttress the point, to buttress his point, the vocal legal expert noted that there is no distinction in that type in the type of asset, so long as the offering presented conforms with the prongs of the Howey test. Says he stated categorically that Gensler might be gaslighting the public with his stance, with a prompt call that it is time for the top securities cop to quote stop ignoring the law. We have yourself a, a situation where someone's willing to win by any means necessary, which means that they also will play dirty. You know, um, let's continue on here. It says, do securities laws apply to crypto? Well, look, the judge made that very clear. So there's no need to even elaborate further. <laughs> That's it. The law has spoken. So now let's move on to a little bit of stellar news. All right. So now we have this piece here. I like to keep up with this company. I enjoy what they're doing on a Stellar blockchain. I think they're going to be a big, big, make a massive impact on Stellar. This is from BPV and it is titled BPV Stellar White Label Wallet with MoneyGram integration. BPV has been doing a great job this year, in my humble opinion. It's transforming the way your customer handles transactions. It says here, by leveraging Circle's USDC on Stellar blockchain, you could avoid legal and compliance headaches of issuing a token. Also, you're going to bring a hell, hell, heck of a lot of volume to Stellar. It says, we have combined the power of, of digital currency with MoneyGram's global agent network to create a customizable solution that can be offered to your end customers. It says, let's delve into, into the advantages your company can provide to its customers through this integration. Number one, simplify integration. Our white label wallet integrated with Circle's USDC on Stellar blockchain seamlessly connects to MoneyGram's ex extensive agent reach locations. This enables your end customers to effortlessly send and receive money both domestically and, and internationally, expanding their financial and enhancing accessibility, which means that once these types of wallets are mainstream, there's going to be a lot of possible volume. If they can... Well, they have to come out with some clear rules for stable coins, right? Now that the certain regulators have taken umbrage, apparently, to stable coins. But when that indeed does happen, and now that we have central banks and countries 
uh, deploying stable coins. When this becomes mainstream, there's going to be a lot of volume on Stellar, a lot of congestion, surge pricing tr triggered. And when that surge pricing is consistently triggered, and then you have to have a higher transaction fee to be uh, uh, to be uh, um, favored for your transaction to go through, what does it do to that price of XLM? And if you want to know more about that, and let's say you're new to Stellar, a lot of people aren't, read that white paper. Go to Stellar.org and read about XLM. Just type in that little search bar, XLM. You're going to read everything I just said. It's an eye opener. We need all the volume we can get. Now, it says number two, customized branding. I don't care about that. Number three, enhanced financial efficiency. This is by leveraging the power of Circle's USDC on the Stellar blockchain and MoneyGram's robust infrastructure or our white label wallet solution facilitates swift and secure transactions. Whether our end customers need to disperse funds to remote teams, make international payments, or facilitate cash pickups, this integration streamlines their financial operations, saving them valuable time and resources, all while making your treasury more efficient. So they're saving money. Anybody can use it, and there's consistent volume. But what you know what this also shows me is that if everything goes according to plan, and there's no guarantees, no guarantees, but if everything goes according to plan, it looks like. Stellar would be the base, like the base of the complete new financial system. You tell me if I'm wrong. They have reach around the globe. They have, they're walking arm in arm with some of the most powerful organizations on the planet. They even have the White House calling them. They're everywhere, right? USDC is everywhere. XLM you can use everywhere as long as you have an XLM-based wallet. They're making huge, a huge push. So XRP, Algorand, Algorand in the middle, XRP do a wholesale, interbank payments and all that stuff like that. But as far as, uh, you know, it still has some banks. Yeah, sure. And they're going to move some big money as well. But the base level where people are making transactions in Web3, I think Stellar has it. I really do. We'll continue to monitor this, but everybody on Stellar is, is moving at a rapid pace. Are you not seeing this? Velo moving at a rapid pace. Every net, LightNet moving at a rapid pace. Bankhaus Vanderhey. Right. The Ukraine, United Nations, all these play MoneyGram, Franklin Templeton, and everybody's drooling over the ability to use it. That's going to bring even more companies. Watch over the next year or two. I think I think Stellar is going to be bigger than most people believe. It's just taking a little bit of time. But every bank coin is taking a little bit of time because we have to get through a few hurdles. Look at what it's doing already. Things are looking good, in my humble opinion. It says, by offering BPV's white label wallet integrated with MoneyGram, your company empowers its end, you end customers with a powerful financial tool. It eliminates the complexities of the traditional banking methods. If they're eliminating the complexities of the traditional banking methods, it means that, that they're not the uh, end users are not using traditional bank banks for this particular offering, which means a lot of capital that was in the traditional banks will be flowing through this offering. Now, you might say, well, no, Alphanim, um, that's not the way that is that that is going. Why would you say that? I'm saying that because I'm also keeping in mind that there is a, a massive bank deposit flights. Do a Google search on that Dep bank deposit flights. You're going to be shocked. People are taking their money out of the bank in mass. They don't trust the banks anymore. I'm seeing article after article, so it's going to be easy for you to find. Over the last few months, they don't trust the banks. So if they have control over these wallets, they're going to trust something more that they can control, which means we could poss possibly have a ton of capital from regular retail people, regular people flowing across Stellar in addition to, a, I would say, a good amount of interbank payments as well. What does it do to the price of XLM? That's just how I see it. I'm a long term XLM holder. That's just how it is. All right. I don't ask anybody else to do the same. I only speak for myself. That's all. All right. So now let's move on here. So now this article is from you dot today. Stable coin bill. This could be huge, right? So stable coin bill finally passes congressional committee approval. Let's scroll down here. See what's going on. This is after hours of wrangling and negotiations. Members of the Financial Committee of the United States Congress have finally assented to the payment stable coin bill, setting a pathway toward giving clarity to an emerging asset class that can change the digital landscape for good. 
if they do this, Stellar's going to go nuts. That USDC and the, the Euro version of USDC they have on Stellar. Oh, my word. Deploying those wallets. Well, let's, con let's continue on. According to updates from media personality Eleanor Tourette, the bill was passed after about 11 hours of markup. And it sailed through the sell through with 34 to 19 votes, a figure that has placed it placed it as the second most important crypto legislative bill assented to by ranking members of the House this week. It says, while there was a report that some Democratic members of the committee attempted to pull out of this bill in the end, a total of five. I don't care who it is, as long as they, they passed. Let's scroll, <laughs> scroll down here. It says general crypto regulation outlook in America. There is still a great deal of uproar in the broader digital currency ecosystem as concerns the regulation of cryptocurrencies. Industry stakeholders, including some pro crypto lawmakers, have accused the Securities and Exchange Commission of instituting regulation by enforcement tactics. Well, that we know. But the good part is, is that we have forward moving momentum, a little bit more clarity, possibly. I have to read a little bit further into this, like I said. So this article here is from Reuters.com. And it's about Japan. This is the article I was talking about before. Massive things are happening. You see how SBI was talking about Japan? And then this is going on also. People were very worried about Japan. It's from Reuters and it's titled, Bank Japan has its cake and eats it. It says, Japan's monetary policy is becoming even more unorthodox on the pathway to normality. Governor Kazuo Ueda on Friday shocked global markets by pledging more flexibility in the bank Bank of Japan's yield curve to co uh, cur curve control scheme, its mechanism for controlling long-term interest rates. The central bank said its previous rigid targeting target of keeping yields on 10-year sovereign bonds in a range of 0.5% to minus 0.5% was now just a, quote, reference. You're changing the game. This lets you know the health of their financial system and why they need the new financial system and why you have um, heads of like uh, big companies like SBI saying that Japan would run on XRP it says because they need it. It says, and it promised to buy 10 year bonds at 1%, which way to define as a quote, just in case cap. Oh, all right. The changes amount to a modest monetary tightening, but policymaking is rarely so committal. Traders immediately breached the officially unchanged range. The yield on 10-year bo government bonds hit a nine-year high of 0.575%. The tweak lends a hand to the weakening yen and acknowledges Japan is close to a virtuous circle where rising inflation lifts wages and spending after decades of stagnation. Yet the quote, just in case cap, gives the BOJ an easier way than most central banks to roll back from tightening if economic data sours. The bank raised its outlook for price rises, excluding food and energy this fiscal year to 3.2%, but its projections further out remain below the BOJ's 2% target. New financial system coming in hot. They're going to need liquidity. Uh, but let's continue on here. <laughs> All right. So. We have this article here on newsbtc.com and it's titled European Central Bank 25 basis point hike. On Thursday, the governing council of European Central Bank announced that it was raising, quote, three key ECB interest rates by 25 basis points in a move similar to the one taken by the United States Federal Reserve. They always follow the United States. My word. It's, it's, it's unbelievable to me. It is not good. <laughs> Let's keep going. The U.S. Federal Reserve on Wednesday increased its fund rates by an additional 25 basis points, its highest interest rate in 22 years. The European Central Bank in a statement admitted that although inflation continues to decline, is that so? It is, quote, still expected to remain too high for too. That's exactly why I said what I just said. My goodness. Too high for too long. Unquote. In a bid to fight inflation, that's, that's negating a lot of the other variables that you should take into, into account. If only they were people that actually lived on the ground and see what the regular people are going through. But, hey, just my opinion. So in a bid to fight inflation and return to its 2% medium target term target in a timely manner, 
The governing council has continued to hike the interest rates for some time now, and this has further raised concerns for investors in the financial market as to whether or not there will be hikes before year's end. For context, the ECB has raised rates by 4% since last year, July, accounting for the fastest tightening cycle in history. It is projected that this rapid increase in rates could negatively affect the expansion of loans in the European region and economic activity also. Everyone knows this. You think they don't? All right, so let, let's move on here. Oh, man, we're getting, the, we're getting through it. We're getting through it. There's some good news today, man. We're staying privy to and, and abreast of everything. And that is where power is. Knowledge is power. That's what they, they used to always tell us that a long time ago. Knowledge is power, and it's true. So this is from Kitco.com, and it's titled, Millennials are the new gold bugs as recession fears support the precious metal state from State Street. Wait. There's plenty of, I, I, I mean, I don't know all the distinctions of all the generations, but there's people across all age ranges. I interact with them all the time. And they are stacking gold, silver, right? A little bit of platinum here and there. But not just because of uh, superficial reasons, right? Uh, and by superficial, I mean those that are easily known economically as well. But they see what's going on with the different currencies around the world, the fiat currencies around the world. And they've worked hard to earn lots of capital, or at least respectable amounts of capital, in my humble opinion. And they're trying to protect their value. Not just because there's a recession. No, we're, we're entering something that's more like a light version of a depression. I'm telling you now. Right? So uh, it's, it's a very strange thing to witness. Because in a lot of key areas, what you're seeing is deceleration in a lot of key areas. That would affect value. Right? And protecting that value. So... I think a lot of stacking is happening also because they see the, the central banks buying up the gold. They see there could be a gold currency coming out, the, the BRICS-based gold currency, which could skyrocket the price of gold. So they're trying to get in low. Just like a lot of us got in very low a long time ago. But still, I think right now they're trying to get in because this is lower than where it might be, let's say, in a year or so. If, that, if they release that BRICS currency or banks go down, all it takes is for a few banks to go under at the same time which is highly possible, highly likely, and that gold price was skyrocket. See, these days, I think the people are more financially aware, right? And more financially diverse in their knowledge. So they see how gold can protect and how there's not so much volatility where you got to worry about it, but worry about the price of gold, right? You just put it away. It's a long-term uh, preservation of capital instrument, right? Store of value. You don't have to worry about it as much as other store of value uh, instruments. So anyway, let's read this little tidbit here. It says, resilient strength in the U.S. economy. Is that so? Is creating some optimism at the Federal Reserve that it can maintain its aggressive monetary policy to fight inflation. It's, I love when they say resilient strength in the U.S. economy. When a lot of the economists that I see are simply saying that people a lot of individuals are just continuing to spend money, even though it's to their own detriment. They just don't know how to not live, you know, uh, live the lifestyle that they've been accustomed to. Right. They're not conserving capital the way they probably should. Right. So that's a lot of what's keeping uh, the economy, the economy afloat as far as capital flow. Right. Uh, it's not that the U.S. economy is just doing something right, in my humble opinion. Like, it's not what I'm seeing. Uh, so anyway, and that, and that, and I'm including talking to people on the ground as well, right? So anyway, says here. So like for example, Jeff Bezos came out last year and was like, "Hey man, maybe you shouldn't. People shouldn't buy that extra TV, you know." And people are like, "Nope, we want two. We want two TVs this year." Like so, you know. So there, it's it's just it, there's that, right? So it's however, according to one market analyst, that I mean, I could be wrong. That's just my. Opinion. I'm not asking you to agree, right? Not trying to convince you. However, according to one market analyst, the, up, the optimism still isn't shared among retail investors. Persistent and persistent fear and uncertainty will keep gold prices well supported through the summer and into the year. I wouldn't say fear. I hate when they use those words, fear. You know, they try to inject this weakness into the people. They're afraid. The people aren't afraid of anything. Most of them. I don't speak for everybody. But I'm saying most of the people aren't afraid of anything. It's called preparatory steps. Taking precautionary measures. It's not about fear. It's about awareness. If I know that there's a lion in the jungle, doesn't mean I'm afraid of the lion. I may have 
instruments to deal with that lion. But the but the confrontation is unnecessary. So all I have to do is take precautionary measures to avoid the lion. It's not about fear, right? Anyway, so in an interview with Kitco News, George Milling Stanley, chief goal strategist at State Street Global Advisor, said that despite better than expected economic data, if you if you trust that data, okay, the co- the one comment. He continues to hear from investors and fund managers across the country is that they are concerned about the impending recession. Quote, people are still very concerned about the health of the economy and the uncertainty is good for gold. Unquote, he said, quote, I don't think that uncertainty is going anywhere anytime soon. Even if the U.S. can avoid a recession, Milling Stanley said that the Federal Reserve's monetary policy will still slow growth. He added that while not a perfect environment for gold, Low growth and stubborn inflation is still positive for the precious metal. Quote, we've we've had seven recessions of significant size in the 50 years that I've been looking at gold. And on average, the annual price appreciation for gold during those recessions was 20 percent. Unquote, he said, quote, if we get a recession, then gold is going to do well. I agree with that. Um, I think I'm not going to say recession. I'll say any economic negativities. That's how I'll that's how I'll phrase that, because we're already in a recession. But okay, so if we don't get a recession. But we a very strange recession, but we're in a recession, right? Says so we've been in it. Says so if we don't get a recession, but we get a period of slow growth, high inflation, then gold is going to do just fine. Milling Stanley said that in the in either scenario, investors should view gold as an essential portfolio portfolio diversifier. I agree with that. Says so he added that gold should outperform outperform equity markets in both a recession or a slower growth environment. All right, so. Now that you have that information, what are you going to do with it? I know what I'm going to do with it. So until next time, let's get to the money.